Another of PvP course. on Polar Night. Yo, I really like this map. Like, f not because of the layout, but because of the textures on it. I yeah, love this map. I do, though, uh, have to say that the brightness or the uh, gamma is a little bit too much. Uh, I mean, it kind of has... I, know, I, I, I mean, That's kind of like I, one of the things I like, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, ga the gamma uh, ratio is kind of annoying for my eyes, to be honest, when I play. But well, uh, when I cast, no problem. Ladies and gentlemen, our eyes aside, we got another <laughs> two great players on deck spawning here in the lower. Well, there's not really a left or right, just the lower part of the map. It's the red Protoss player playing for NC Sports, but Empire Ents in the Ace Team Story Cup. It is Elfie. Ooh. Elfie, Ooh. let's go! Yeah! Let's go! Yeah, yeah! <laughs> Gonna get all gangs. <laughs> of course, Elfie from Finland, but in uh, the top middle, playing as the Blue Protos uh, for Invictus Gaming, it is Maxed. Maxed. Yeah, again, I was, I was referencing this a little bit earlier, guys. Maxed is a player who I didn't first see in WCS, I didn't first see like on some grand stage, but I first had the pleasure and the enjoyment of watching him play in a Southeast Asia. That is Australia for those who don't know, Masters Cup. I believe it's Masters Cup, maybe it was Winter Nights Tournament, but whatever it was, this guy has shown some crazy tactics, like White Rye level, like he's the Chinese White Rye as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but the sad thing is he plays a lot more standard than special tactics, but I know he's got it in him. <laughs> <laughs> maybe gonna go for some White Rye proxy carrier, if nothing else. Um, hey, if nothing but... else, it would catch your opponent off guard, that's for sure. It might not <laughs> <Yeah>. win, but <laughs> they certainly Definitely wouldn't gonna... see it coming gonna make your opponent go WTF so <laughs> um, and this is exactly the same from both players coming out no nodding out the out of the usual for now yeah and uh, I'm just gonna answer this real quick because it's been asked in chat again we're on a bit of a delay so sorry if uh, this question's fallen out of chat at the time I respond to this but they are playing the North American server currently which is kind of a big thing to consider now most of these players at Ants Empire, they're from Finland, they're from Russia, like they are from Central Europe. They're, I don't know how the latency is, but these haven't been the most micro-intense games. It's, a lot of it's just been awesome builds, hitting at correct timing, so I don't think that that latency is going to be as big of an issue as it normally would in, say, another big matchup. Oh, latency at all isn't as uh, an issue at all in on the NA server, only on uh, Korea. Yeah, uh, Europe on, to Korea is terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like 400 to 500 latency on Korea, so you can't really play there, no way. Uh, so both players playing normally, actually Maxid going for that double gateway. So maybe gonna go for 3 gate stalker as well here, just this like is... Elfie in the previous game. This is the truly irritating part of PvP though. You cannot stop your opponent from scouting what you're doing for the first five minutes. Until that first stalker or mothership cores out, there's no way to hunt the probe down. So yeah. you're forced to kind of just let them see what your build order is. And you have to confuse them with the, the follow-up. That has to be your Ooh. game plan. Well, um, Alfie gonna go for the Stargate this time. I guess eating uh, the heart and the brains of his former opponent, Jim, saying I'm gonna try <laughs> your tactics. Maybe gonna work it out. Though uh, he has to go for uh, for Voidray, I believe, first here. If he wants to go against the three gate stalker, or for now it's only two gate stalker. They are being chronoed so, out though, so he wants them on the field. So it might be th like two gates, but it'll be three stalker rush. Yeah, sure. three stalker rush, yeah. And uh, the probe is out for Max Maxit, so he will be pulling down that proxy pylon as well. Oh, Maxid gonna lose one of the stalkers, actually, big mistake. Oh, no, actually, it just takes a bit of damage uh, on it. Still a wow. significant thing worth noting, but... Yeah. I Oracle mean, every stalker... Once again. I, I don't know, I mean, Oracle... I mean, you can do that counter damage, of course, it's always the availability, but I believe that Voidray would add, up, would add up so much uh, to the defense. I think if... If truly Elfie thought that this was going to be like a 3 gate, 4 gate all in, we'd see a Void Ray, but having only seen two of the gateways, no Chronos were used on the Cyber Core when he scouted, there's not a big tell saying, hey, I'm going to go for like a 3 gate or a 4 gate. Yeah. So it makes sense to go for the Oracle. The Void Ray follow up, of course, as well, but Max had gone for a bit of an expansion and, <laughs> you know, his ally got caught doing the same thing. We'll see if this hurts him or helps him. Uh, although Maxed does have the three uh, three void uh, three void three stalkers out already, and as well for uh, same goes for the sentries, so 
he is going to be prepared again if any possible ground pushes and against the oracle as well and look at that oh, he's oh my god the oracle the nope he's not going to take out the sentry no, he's no going to try to 10 health will get away so sick right there Elfie definitely must not lose that oracle it's going to be his lifesaver at one point in time well, and behind this the biggest thing about the oracle right now isn't the damage you can do but the threat of the damage you can yeah. do it's going to keep max set at home and from pushing out across the field uh, yeah, and Elfi behind this can easily take the expansion, can easily get his technology up and running. Uh, Maxed though does start his immortal production, so gonna go for three gate immortal for now. Uh, I'm thinking he wants to do some sort of a push, but he needs to prepare against additional or oracles out here. Uh, oh, nice. The second one will by. be chased off. Yeah. Yeah. Immortals out in the field. I mean, right now, ooh, that oracle going back in for some more. Oh God. It's got so such low health. It essentially yeah. only has 60 shields. It might as well not have health. It's really dangerous to be using the Oracle. But of course, Elfie recognizing I can't get in there, I can't do the damage, goes for an expansion of his own. Again, he's a little bit behind in that regards, but not significantly so. He's he's perfectly fine. Chrono Boost has kept him up with workers, so he's not so far behind. 35 to 29 at the moment. Yeah, uh, Elfie behind is uh, gonna go for his own immortals and uh, already added a forge there, so gonna be able to start the upgrade, so maybe get an upper hand at that as well. I like Ooh. the... Max head moving towards Colossus really quickly here. Well, this is actually an interesting idea by Max Ed, although it's kind of risky if uh, Elfie decides to do some sort of a push here, which he definitely wants to go def uh, with the research for plus one weapons on the way, but Maxed does scout it off. I mean, he sees everything, so... Oh, Oracle of the Natural was finally picked off. Oracle going back towards the main, still has Stalkers defending. Maxed will not be caught off guard by the shenanigans of Elfie. Yeah, doesn't want to die against this. Uh, I mean, no player wants to. Uh, Elfie trying his best to deal some damage, just denied perfectly. And uh, Elfie should go for a little bit oh of God. scout off. These uh, oracles are really not getting many kills. Yeah, I mean, in total, four SC, uh, four probes were killed for the cost of one oracle already. It just doesn't pay off. No, certainly not. Uh, Max Head gets a full scout off of his opponent. That's the beauty of hallucinations. Yeah. You can them cross your yeah. you split. <laughs> and you don't give a damn if you lose it because it's free. <laughs> I still oh, think, I, I stand by the fact that I think hallucinations should be able to do damage to other hallucinations. Like if you oh. have a hallucinated phoenix <laughs> and it runs into another hallucinated oh phoenix, they should be able to fight one another. You just gave me the craziest of ideas. <laughs> you would have like the, uh, <laughs> you would go for mass sentry and then just try to win with uh, Colossus behind this, with hallucinated Colossus against well, no, his no. own. Like, you would yeah. have some sort of a... Uh, Battle of Colossus, <laughs> uh, hallucinated Colossus, something like that, and it would be an so awkward sick. royale for sure. But Max yeah. said, I like the position he's taken actually with this. There's only really two ways to come in. Oh my God, he's even boldly going for a quick third. Wow, but uh, both Max players, really man, I gotta confident. I gotta go queue up some techno or something. We're gonna have like a big laser beam, a huge rave fight. As there's gonna be so many Colossus on the field with both players starting Colossus production at 11 minutes. I would not be surprised if we saw six plus Colossus for each player by the time they engage. Hell, this it may is, even be more. Yeah, this is actually the same game as we saw uh, Grubby against Genius in WCS. Basically, Genius went for the same double uh, robo facility, uh, if I am, if I believe, if I remember correctly, and had that uh, six Colossus count against Grubby's uh, same six, so of course giving him enough time, but. Uh, Genius did have the third so much faster and was able to produce uh, and to reinforce so much uh, better and I think the same goes for Maxit, uh, already feeling confident uh, taking the third base as we see. So yeah. Well Max said too, let's not forget, the third base can give him enough gas that he can definitely outproduce his opponent and if not outproduce, at least get upgrades where Elfie can't. But Elfie in the meantime is going on plus two weapons while Max says choosing to go for the plus one armor instead so at the time being it'll be 2-0 versus 1-1. One, one. Yes, so I, I mean, it's uh, it's going to be hard to say how how the battle will span out. Uh, although Elfie does have the high count of Immortals, that's at least one thing that goes for him. They, you know, the Immortals really are the unsung hero of these Colossus fights when the Colossus numbers are low. Yeah. The, the Immortals are so much more important, but as you get more Colossus, oh. the splash damage starts racking up and... Oh, going to be a bit of an onslaught here. Colossus is going to get caught in yeah. time warp. There will be no retreat whatsoever. Hallucinations are thrown down. And Maxed is going to lose all of his Colossus. 
And uh, here did come the immortal count, but uh, didn't do wow. enough. Uh, I thought only... that last. I can't believe that last one got away. Yeah, that was so close there for Maxid. For Max Maxid. Maxid. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, the ground. Like, so the Zealots, the Immortals, the Stalkers, they're all cannon fodder for the Colossus. The splash damage negates the effect of the Hardened Shield to the extent where it, there's so much splash going on, the Hardened Shield is irrelevant. It still does only take 10 damage from the Colossus per beam. So, I mean, it cuts the damage in half, but even then, it's still so... Like, the Immortals are so... They do, what, 65, 60, 55 damage. It's 65 at level 3 weapon upgrades to armored. So, they can punch a hole through Colossus if you have enough of them. But, of course, without that splash damage, they are just no good. Yeah, and uh, the more, most important thing for uh, Maxid right now is the gas. So, he can uh, uh, have his Colossus count rebuilt. Of course, lost to Colossus is a big hit. Uh, going up against four of Elfies now, I don't know. It's uh, not a smart choice, I believe. I mean, I don't think it's a smart got choice the to. Great spread, too. Like, you cannot death ball yeah. in this matchup. And Elfie also has plus two weapons now complete, so gonna have that upgrade advantage, advantage well, as well. The upgrade advantage is gonna be kind of negligible. I mean, he's got the plus one armor, yeah, so it's kind of like having one, one zero versus yeah. one zero. But one key key thing is here, both players are waiting. They're banking up their resources right now. At least Elfie is. He wants to be able to throw down a ton of Zealots as soon as that charge is complete. Because, of course, charge lots are so good. If you connect them to the Colossus, the Colossus go down very quickly. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. Maxi now pulling back. Like Temple you said, archives. bunkering down. We're gonna have some uh, archons get on the field. Get yeah, tank some of that I like damage. it. I like the idea of archons. They're always good to see. <laughs> Archon, uh, they get like so <laughs> like 350 shields, 10 health. They are chunky units made for tanking. And there we go. Yeah. A couple archons coming in here. Meanwhile, interestingly enough, Max had to go for a warp prism. I don't know if this will be for forward reinforcements or if he's gonna try and sneak something into the main. I think this will be for forward I reinforcements though. I would rather see to. I would rather see some uh, sneaking in with zealots. Maybe yeah. if uh, the availability of DTs would be there, uh, that would definitely be the better choice in my uh, on, in my opinion. But uh, well, also the forward the forward pylon is not a bad choice. I want to point out somehow, despite losing the Colossus early, that's the advantage of the third base. I guess <laughs> seven Colossus to six. Max said in the lead in that regard. But of course, when there's this many Colossus on the field, it comes down to who gets that first volley off and whose engagement is a little bit better positioned because splash yeah. damage. Five classes or six classes. It's not like Vila scores, man. It's it's everything else yeah. matters. <laughs> it just matters how you have your army spread, how you have a colossus spread, and uh, how many archons and immortals do you have in your army that can tank the initial damage. And uh, Maxid getting ready to engage here. Uh, Maxid. <laughs> Meanwhile, Elfie doesn't really know or it's, yeah, yeah he knows posturing because he doesn't know where the best place to come in is, but. Yeah. Some Templar on the front lines are not in Archon mode just yet. He needs to transform those before they are picked off. And the Zealots caught in the Time Warp. Now, of course, Time Warp is weird. It does affect Colossus. They are massive units, but they don't have Frenzy like Ultra, so they are affected by slows. Yeah. Oh, um, going to charge right into the Mineral Lion. Pick off some workers. Going to force a fight out of Elfie, but Elfie still saying no Elf thank you. Yeah, still not going in there. Still having the lesser Colossus count. And here comes the engagement. There's so many Colossus for Maxi and uh, additional Maxi joining. Maxi is not focusing his Colossus. Yeah. They're shooting the Assimilator, but it doesn't really matter. Elfie's still forced to retreat. And Maxi will take out this third base. But taking out the third base might as well be taking out the army. Yeah, and uh, from this point on, Elfie has no more ground army to tank here. Only the Colossus are left. Yeah, uh, really uh, Max a lot of yeah, Max is still with some Zealots and Archons and stuff like that left behind. Ooh. Maybe get nice one of time warp. Oh that my time warp is going to catch so many of these Colossi. Oh, Elfie is no. going to just be in full retreat. Max said, continuing to push forward. Colossus is still alive. Man, the Archon it, has 18 shields left, yeah. and it's still standing. The last Colossus goes down. And Elfie G -G. is going to GG. And I mean, Victor's Gaming will again <laughs> tie up the series 3-3. Three three. Wow. I mean, that those Colossus are so important. You really need, but you really need so much zealot, so much uh, uh, tankiness uh, below them. And otherwise, they're just they're out for the picking. There's no way you can save them otherwise. Yeah, and real quick, guys, the UI we're using right now is the GameHeart UI. Normally, there's a base trade TV customized one that we utilize, but because DreamHack is coming and DreamHack requires us to use this UI, I'm getting as much practice in as possible with it. So I do hope you enjoy it. Uh, the only real difference between this UI, quite frankly, and ours is the productions in the top left instead of the bottom.